This is the Santoft installation guide for using the Coraflex flashing system at chimneys. Install the battens and underlay in the usual way. To make the junctions waterproof, turn the underlay up 100mm at the front of the chimney and also 70mm at each side of the chimney stack. Turn the upstand around the corner to keep it watertight. At the chimney back, trim the underlay level with the top of the gutter back. The flashing will start with an upstand and run over the boarding and tilt fillet and end with a welt. The underlay then laps over the flashing to allow any water to run over the flashing and drain either side of the chimney. Tile around the chimney, cutting tiles where necessary and make sure the cuts are big enough to mechanically fix. Once the tiles are in place we are ready to measure up for the flashing pieces. Starting with the front apron, measure the upstand allowing for 20mm into the chase. The upstand is 100mm and the flashing needs to cover the tiles by at least 150mm. That gives a total width on here of 320mm. The length of the front apron is the width of the chimney plus 100mm, giving a total length here of 470mm. So we measure 470mm along the length and mark a line across and then cut it to length. To make the 20mm turning into the wall we can use the edge of a piece of timber. Then we make the bend to create the upstand. And there you see the finished shape, ready to offer up to the wall. We can now put the flashing into place, making sure that it overhangs each side of the chimney by 50mm. Once we are sure it fits we can remove the top paper backing. And then press the flashing firmly against the wall. Once the upstand has adhered to the chimney we can start dressing the flashing onto the tiles. At the same time we can create upstands at each side of the chimney. To allow the Coraflex to turn into the upstand we need to make a wedge shaped bend here. This should be folded in such a way so that any water driving against here is directed away. Once the flashing is roughly in place over the tiles and the bends have been made the remaining paper backing can be removed and the flashing dressed closely onto the tiles. Once the front apron flashing is dressed into place, a good tip is to temporarily replace a portion of the paper backing over the upstands just to protect the butyl until we install the side flashings. At this point the upstands can be trimmed like so. Next, measure from the top end of the back gutter to the bottom edge of the apron flashing. In this case it is one metre. A length of Coraflex can now be measured and cut to this length. Marking and cutting on the top face makes it easier to follow the little corrugations. Next we mark a centre line. The flashing can then be bent at 90 degrees along this line. Then we mark the water line. This needs to be 65mm from the bend. This will be the minimum height that the flashing extends up the wall. Once the water line is marked we can offer the flashing up to the wall like this, making sure that the bottom end of the flashing coincides with the bottom end of the apron flashing. Next we mark horizontal lines from the watermark to the edge of the flashing. These will form the turns into the brickwork joints. Then we mark cut lines 20mm above the bend lines. The flashing will be cut along these lines. We then mark a line from the point where the cut line meets the water line out to the edge of the flashing. Once marked we can cut along the cut lines and remove each little triangle piece. Once cut offer the flashing up to the wall to check the fit. At the top end the excess will be cut off there. Next we can bend the turnings ready to fit into the brickwork. These should be at least 20mm wide. We shall just offer it to the wall one more time to check the fit before removing the backing paper. Then the backing paper can be peeled off and the flashing can now be dressed onto the wall. The backing can now be removed from the bottom apron flashing so that the side flashing can be dressed onto the apron upstand like so. Once the side flashing is securely in place it can be trimmed to within about 25 to 30 mil above the bottom apron upstand. It can then be bent and dressed over the upstand like so.
By folding the side flashing over the bottom apron, this makes sure that any water which is driven into this area is directed safely away down the roof. This corner can be trimmed off. Next, we are ready to dress the cover flashing over the tiles. So again, we peel off the backing paper and then start pressing the flashing onto the tiles like so. Take care to push the flashing right into the corners over the tile tails. A bossing stick comes in really handy for dressing the coraflex, but you can also use non-specialist tools such as the shaft of a hammer or even a knife handle. If necessary, the outer edge of the flashing can be marked and then trimmed to a straight line to give a neater finish. At the top end of the side flashing, trim off the excess. Just leave enough to allow a turn over the back gutter. Next we are ready to form the back gutter flashing. The flashing will start with an upstand at the back of the chimney, run across the back board, up the return, over the tilt fillet to the top of the board and then finish with the welt. Here we need a total width of 450mm and be long enough to reach the outer edges of the side flashings. Once the coraflex is cut to length, we can make the appropriate bends for the turning, the upstand and the return. Then we can put the flashing into place to check for fit. If everything is ok, we can remove the first width of backing paper from the upstand and base and then again place the flashing into its correct position. Then we can turn the flashing into the chase and dress it against the upstand and onto the base. Then we can remove the remaining backing paper and start to dress the flashing onto the return and over the tilt fillet, taking care to dress the flashing right into the corners at each side and over the tiling to meet the side flashings. Again, a leg tool is ideal for dressing the flashing, but a hammer shaft can also be used to good effect. Remember to form the welt at the top edge of the flashing. Once formed, the underlay can be turned back over the flashing and tilt fillet. At the chimney corners, the coraflex can be trimmed so that it can just be turned over the side flashing at the edge of the back gutter. This edge can then be dressed over the corner. Trim back the flashing so that it is in line with the side flashing below the next tile. Once the flashing is trimmed and dressed, the next course of tiles above the chimney can be laid. And there we have the finished chimney flashings. A chimney back apron, two side flashings and a front apron. If a more traditional appearance is required at the front apron, the two upstands can be dressed over like so. And here we see how water runs into the back gutter and then out onto the side flashings.